us, please. <laughs> uh, no, it was really great. It's definitely a learning experience. Uh, we did a run of Disney on Ice right before those in December. So back when things were a little more strict, um, the pod seating is very tricky and interesting to work and is a giant pain. But uh, no, it's been really great. And you learn a lot of new things, um, a lot of things on the back end of Ticketmaster that you never thought you'd have to learn. Um, but yeah. The small Great world news. too. Jess works for uh, David Greenbaum down there, the box office manager and director of ticketing, who's a good old school friend of me, mine from back in my SMG days as well too. So, yep, ticketing, tick, the ticketing network and families. Yes. <laughs> well, Jason, why don't why don't you go ahead and, and get us started? You along with uh, Megan, and um, let, let's let it go. Cool. Oh, sounds good, guys. Uh, so, like I mentioned, where you are in an active zone down here right now, but uh, I'm coming to you live uh, from Palm Beach, Florida, uh, on site of the Honda Classic, uh, PGA golf event for those of you, as we're installing stuff as it goes on. <laughs> Let me get a little further into the thing and see how long my Wi-Fi lasts. Um, but no, thanks for the opportunity to do this with all with everyone. Uh, when Bob approached me a little while ago, he asked if I wanted to be a part of the emerging trends. Um, panel and I said you know what in all honesty I'm going to be on site at an event one of the first events that we've worked in a year uh during this pandemic so one of my first travel ones and I said would it be of any interest to you if we do it from there um and so one of the big things of doing this live from here as you see me walk around and see me on the side of up here and see me in front of the Honda activation tent and everything was just really kind of show you guys the students the prospective students the ones the alumni joining us um that live events are coming back uh, so to help provide a little bit of hope, a little bit of actually, you know, we can see what we see on television with the fans in the stands, but to actually see the preparation um, that goes on to here, the safety measures that we all still take in place um, because of this, you'll notice our, you know, when we talk to our box office staff, they're all masked, all the preventative measures we go through, um, but just everybody doing their part to have 10,000 people per day back at this event, the Honda Classic. So um, throughout today, well, I'm gonna to introduce you to Brett Cook, who's also on the call. Uh, Brett works for Tick Tracks and Ticketure, the ticketing company uh, that is doing the Honda Classic. We started working with them last year. So we're gonna to go to him in a little bit to talk a lot about, about his experience, setting it up, the differences between last year and this year, um, how to do a ticketing tournament during a pandemic and have people win safely um, and all that. And then also on the call is Callie Lindsberg from my team. Callie was one of my traveling uh, managers and Callie was constantly always on the road and in the last year has um, pivoted well and found some work to do and she's going to talk about some of that as well as what she's doing down here at the Honda Classic with us as well too. Uh, but to get stuff started I'm going to turn it over to Megan real quick and she's going to go over some of the ground rules and just some stuff about the chat. Cool yeah thanks everyone for being here I'm really excited to be doing this with all of you guys. Um, sorry I think my email just went off but um with that said, I just want to remind everyone, make sure your mics are muted, that we're being respectful when everyone is talking. And if you guys have any questions, please, please, please feel free to send them to me um, in the chat. You can do it like direct message or just put them in the chat and we'll make sure to leave a few minutes there at the end so we get all those questions answered. Yay. Cool, thanks, Megan. Um, Megan's one of my students from previous classes, dealt with, uh, was one of our ones during our hybrid models, uh, did a great job and so I'm glad to have her on here as well too. Uh, also just wanted to bring up that our, my students this semester are working on a class group project surrounding the Honda Classic. So for those of you that are on here, this is a lot of your work and your research that you've got to work on first handedly through this as well too. Um, they did some analysis through ticket operations, sales, social media and marketing to kind of see the impact of Honda Classic, what it does to the community and different stuff. Um, so we'll be sharing that with the people from Honda Classic after that. Um, but this is also just a nice culmination into some of the work that they got involved in to see kind of how things are coming together here too. Um, and just funny, just to show how active it is. I literally was just sitting in the space I was talking to you guys at. Within the last five minutes, it just turned into an active work zone. So now I'm finding different locations to talk to everybody in. So, um, but if we're going to Brett, just wanted to kind of give a little bit of our history with the Honda Classic um, and everything. So last year, uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, Jason Varnish, adjunct professor of Point Park, but also owner of Bomb Advisors. We do box office management for tours, venues, and um, sports teams across the country. Uh, and last year, a little bit earlier than this in February, we were lucky enough to be called on by our friends at Tix Tracks, a company we've known for a very long time, uh, to help with the operations of the Honda Classic. 
And we had never done PGA before, but what we had done is we've done festivals, we've done concerts, we've done as many different things. So we were able to come down here and work with Brett, some of his team as well as hire some of our own team for this as well too. And still some of the different things that maybe golf wasn't used to or the operations of how we would manage, you know, a championship hockey event or, or an event at Heinz Field still. So we were able to give some of that. Um, it was an amazing experience. For those of you interested in working golf, it's not all country club management. It's long hours. Uh, we put in anywhere from 12 to 16 hour days, um, fulfilling tickets up to the point that there were 20 to 25,000 people a day sometimes coming through our gates. Um, it is super long. The box office usually opens up at 6 a.m. in the morning before the sun even comes up. Uh, so I know we all talk about how you need to be prepared to work in the industry. Golf will prepare you for that. Um, but it honestly was one of the most rewarding events I've done in my career. So we are happy to be back here this year. But even more so that because after the Honda Classic last year, the pandemic hit literally almost two weeks after we were done with this event. So if you follow golf, um, the championship at TPC was last week. The, the, the schedule's all out of whack this year, but they went to play in that a few weeks after this tournament and it was shut down that Friday and golf stopped for 13 weeks uh, along with many other sports. This event was the last one that we worked at Bomb Advisors in the last year. So we're very, very pleased and pleasure and happy to be back here with them this year uh, just to get back here to practice our craft and to work with the people that we love working with, the staff that we kind of ended and ran into the pandemic with last year. Um, it's symbolic in a way that we can be back here at Palm Beach working with everyone. So that's a little bit of history of that. I'm going to turn it over to Brett because he hears me talk enough while we're down here, uh, <laughs> as, well as, my, as well as all my employees as well, too. But I just wanted to give you a little, and a bird literally just flew across my screen as well, too. So we are we are risking life and limb to bring you this today from the Palm Beach. <laughs> so, um, so let me turn it over to Brett. We've known each other for two years, but I've known the owner of his company for a very long time. Uh, and without further ado, let me let him tell you about himself and his involvement here with the Honda Classic. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, first off, thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to participate. Uh, when Jason approached me about this literally four weeks ago, I was like, Jason, this is like this is during the middle of our setup. Are we going to be able to carve out time? And literally, we were on site today at 830. Um, and because of the experience that he and his staff gained last year, we were literally set up within two and a half hours. And so we could be at the pool right now, um, sipping margaritas, but instead uh, we are uh, still on site. So Jason will, uh, I, I get to pick where we go for dinner tonight, Jason, because of this, but uh, no. So just a little bit of background about myself. Um, as Jason alluded to, I work for TixTrack. I'm a director of sales. Um, Backstory, I attended the University of Kansas undergrad, grad, so Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Um, graduate school, I was a intramural GA. I love sports. Um, and so I officiated during my years at KU. It helped put myself through school and it helped me learn even more that I love sports. And so after graduating uh, grad school, looking for opportunities, there were minimal in, in the Midwest. And so I took a chance. I moved to Miami and didn't know anyone um, and landed a job at the, it was at the time it was called the Lipton Championships. It's a, uh, it's a um, tennis tournament down in Miami. It's now called the Miami Open. So literally four days down there, I got hired uh, part-time or hourly, I should say, Four months later, I was hired full-time by IMG. And uh, in 2003, I co-founded IMG's ticketing division. And so at the time we were managing 50 to 60 events um, in a calendar year. And so it continued to grow. I recently left IMG uh, in 2019 and was fortunate enough to land a position at TixTrack. And obviously that's how I was introduced to Jason and his team. Um, so a little bit about background about the Honda, as Jason alluded to last year, the event was occurring and it seemed like the, the world was, was changing every hour. Um, and when we reflect back, we consider ourselves to be very fortunate that we were able to have the event completed because all these other golf tournaments, um, that were occurring after they had to do mass refunds, hundred percent refunds which is a mess for a box office. And so 
it's hard to imagine that literally 52 weeks later, here we are, same venue, a lot has changed. Obviously, now we're wearing masks. Last year, we had a lot of hand sanitizer and a lot of Clorox wipes. We didn't know what to expect, but now everyone's wearing a mask. And in previous years, this event would have an attendance of 200,000. Um, this year, it's going to be closer to, thank you. Uh, this year, it's going to be closer to uh, 40 or 50. So there's a lot of capacity controls in place for the event. Jason, you want me to continue on? You're on mute, oh, buddy. No, go ahead. Yeah, keep keep going with whatever okay. you're rolling. So, yeah, so some of, some of the changes that the tournament has implemented this year, obviously capacity controls. Jason, I think, has alluded to that they're limiting 10,000 guests on site uh, on a daily basis. That includes the fans. That includes credentialed guests and so forth. So that puts a premium on, A, safety and security of the guests, right? Uh, everyone on site has to wear a mask um, and then maximizing revenues. So they used to have, as I said, 30 to 40,000 people on site. Now it's been reduced to approximately 25% of that number. And so this event used to have a plethora of different ticketing options. They used to have a family four pack, um, a PGA two pack, I mean, it, it, it was unbelievable the amount of ticketing options. It was a very fan friendly event. This year they've consolidated their ticket and offerings um, that really it's, it's only grounds passes and it's only hospitality. They used to have flex tickets that it's, it was a good any one day ticket. So you purchased the ticket. It was up to you if you wanted to utilize it for Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Because of the capacity controls, they cannot do that, at least not for this year. So now any ticket that you buy has to be day specific. Um, so the tournament is already sold out of Saturday. I'm expecting by the end of today, they will be sold out for Friday and Sunday as well. Um, tomorrow, the first day of the event, we still have ticket availability. Uh, I think for the most part, guests are embracing the opportunity just to get out and do something. And with this and with it being a golf tournament, it's a GA event literally held outdoors. And so the, the spacing occurs automatically. Um, you're not at a theater. You're not in an arena with six feet in between. You can have 10 feet. You could have 100 feet in between. So it's really up to the guest and how they want to uh, adhere to that. As you can see, I'm constantly moving positions as uh, we are actively in a active work zone and trying to find different spots and everything. So, one oh, thing, thanks, that, Brett. yeah, one thing I'll add real quick, Jason, yeah. was um, regarding the, the ticketing software. So, this event is GA. There's not a lot of restrictions on it um, in the past, at least. But this year, because the capacity restrictions are, again, 10,000 per day, they, they wanted to have capacity controls to say, we only want to sell 5,000 grounds passes. We only want to sell 1,200 for this hospitality, 400 for this other hospitality. So Ticketure, we have a timed entry solution. It's a GA based timed entry solution. Um, and it's commonly used for by, for example, the Hoover Dam is utilizing it, a Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, uh, the Huntington Gardens out in California. So prior to the pandemic, it was utilized by a lot of museums. And now, because the software has those unique capacity controls, the timed entry capability, it's being, it's in high demand, which is great. It's keeping me very busy. Um, but as Jason alluded to when he started um, the conversation, we're just happy to be back. I mean, literally, this was my last event as well as Jason 52 weeks ago. And this is my first event. So I have hardware that's been in storage literally for a year that I had to dust off, update, all my ticket scanners, all the iOS devices. And so I think we're very excited to be back, albeit with, uh, with limitations, 
Um, but hopefully this is, this is a great sign of things to come. And not to point out, but I'm just wondering if someone could take a screenshot of me real quick so that I can use this as my photo, as my um, Facebook page from now on, because I think it looks with the palm tree behind me in the sun. I just want to point that out there. Well, this, <laughs> this gives you a better understanding of what I get to deal with on site um, with Jason. So it's no, it's it's all good. Um, as Jason said, you know, we've known each other for, for over a year now and um, his group had never worked golf before and golf is unique because literally we meet at the hotel lobby at 4.30 in the morning to be on site by 5.15. We're up before, you know, the birds are. And so we have to be ready. Literally last year, the gates opened at six. This year, because it's three weeks later, um, the time change, daylight savings time occurred. So we actually get to sleep in an extra hour. Our day is just extended a little bit later. Um, <laughs> But um, it's golf is, is unique. So, nice. hey Brett, Brett, just for your uh, staffing, was there any requirement from the state of Florida for that you had to be vaccinated or any 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 restrictions that you folks felt? No, no, no restrictions. At least not yet. I think it's very fluid. I think the situation is is evolving and. Um, for, for not just staffing, but just organizations in general. And, and to say that you have to be vaccinated to do this, um, there's a large festival in Miami that's taking place in, in a couple of weeks. And I just read yesterday that they are requiring a vaccination or a negative COVID test before anyone can enter. Um, those grand rules are not happening here. You would hope that folks, if, if, if they have any symptoms, they would stay home. Who knows? Um, but that festival is implementing more strict um, protocols for it to take place. But that, that's a much different situation because in that festival, people are in large tents together. Um, here, you're literally on a golf course spread out. So much different situation. So Bob, in a minute too, I'm going to take you around and show you some of our other employees and staff that we have here. But one of them um, that might not be able to join us today because his workload is a little different from what we have. Um, but Doug Bean, who also has taught down there at Point Park, uh, is down here with us as well. Um, and Doug, for that matter, um, actually had to take a COVID test prior to his work on Sunday because uh, he's dealing directly with the players. Um, so much like we've talked about in other sports in our class and your classes is that there's different levels of access to a lot of these events. Um, and because he was dealing directly with the, with the athletes, which are tier one and don't really have a, as direct interaction with tier two or tier three like us, um, Doug's kind of been separate from us for the most part of the week, um, as well as separate from a lot of crowds in the admin because he's been primarily fulfilling golfer and player um, requests this week. So he did have to go through one. So there are different standards and protocols based on the waves and the tiers of what your responsibility is. So um, just Brett, if you want to find, jump in real quick, just for not confuse everybody. Um, I know many of you I see on here have taken my ticket in class. Um, and one of the biggest things I try to stress for those that haven't um, is just to look outside your normal understanding of what ticketing is um, and beyond the, you know, the ticket masters and ticket.com. There's so many jobs and offerings out there. Um, and so for those of you, if we might be confusing them by the tick tracks, ticketure, just to give you a little background on that. Um, and what Brent actually does is, is there are so many platforms of ticketing and each is so specific to cater to and work differently uh, depending on what the event is and ticketure down here works wonderful uh, for golf because it's a general admission event and that's a platform built for general admission. Um, my history with tick tracks goes way back uh, and his Brett's boss uh, Michael Aria who's been a long friend since my days back at Mellon Arena um, actually sold me the component as a scaled seating map. Uh, so for those of you that have my class and I make you scale and color things, uh, back in the day, I used to have to color uh, maps with crayons. Uh, I used to have to do scaling maps with Sharpies. Uh, and Tixtrax came up with this great platform that we were able to run a program and generate a brightly colored sold map. So as, um, and we're going to introduce you to someone else a little bit later uh, from Feld Entertainment that utilized that as well too, just to help with their marketing and dynamic pricing back in the day and everything. Um, but as sold maps started to become kind of a common thing for other ticketing companies in a competitive measure, Tix Tracks really advanced their product and developed um, an 
reserve seating platform called Enliven, which we have used on another tour that we've all been a part of um, called Apollo 11 uh, that was out for a year, several years ago. Uh, and then they bought Ticketure, which is what Brett works for now and is a GA seating platform based out of um, a New Zealand technology, I believe, if I'm correct. Um, and just goes to show how a company can do to keep up with changes in technology and everything. So for those of you that were like a ticket what, a ticket sure, a tic that's what that is. So Tix Tracks is the company, Tix Tracks is the company that owns it all. And Liven and Ticketure are separate platforms that we use. So I will say okay. the fact that you all are a part of this class, it, it puts you it gives you a, a distinct advantage. Um, when when I was in school, there was no at, at KU there was nothing to do with ticketing. And look, I can't say I grew up wanting to be a ticket manager. I, I, I'll be honest, I had no idea what I wanted to be. But the opportunity came to me. And at the time, it was all about customer service, you know, interacting with guests, being able to travel, you know, I've, I've done events in Germany, in the UK, Hawaii, Mexico. So I've had a lot of fun. And now my goal is to hire younger staff that get to travel to those places and, and I stay home. Um, but it is truly a unique experience. Um, and I'm so fortunate that I've been a part of, of the ticketing community over the years. My oldest son, he's 12. And it was, I was talking to him the other day about, you know, uh, how I'm going to be away for a couple of days. And he's like, you know, like, I, he told me, he's like, I don't think I want your job when I get older. I'm like, why not? He's like, I don't want to do all the traveling. And I'm like, I get it. But that may change as you get older because there are a lot of advantages because you have an opportunity not only to travel, but to, to meet great people and, and spend a lot of time um, with the likes of Jason and, you know, be on the road. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm jealous that you all have this opportunity. Um, and the fact that you get to hear firsthand knowledge from Jason and all the events that he manages because he manages a, a, a lot, a wide variety of different events. And that's only going to help you down the road. Um, so kudos to you all. Now I'm going to have to buy bread at dinner for beefing me up so much. Like that. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, thank you, my friend. It's good to be down here. Um, so if you're right, I'm going to walk everyone through kind of a guest experience real quick, and I'm going to end up back where Brett and some of our team is at. If that's is that okay with you, Brett? Sure, sure, sure. Right now, I'll take I'll take you off the cuff for a second there, and I'm make make you talk a little more. So, um, so during the process, I was walking around, um, and I came out to where the buses are going to let people off. So just to kind of show the students and everybody on here what the flow of traffic and what it looks like now for a guest coming to the PGA on the classic. I'm just going to walk through and kind of give you a quick um, five minute brief of where it goes and, and how you get in. So similar to the lot previous years, parking is very limited at the course where we're at. Uh, we're at PGA national, which when there isn't a PGA tournament here is a uh, country club, pretty much uh, one of the more premier ones in the country, obviously big enough to host a PGA event. So you have parking for a country club not for 200 some thousand people or, or, or 20 to 40 like we would see in a day. Uh, so most of the parking is done off site. And one of the things that Brett also sells are parking ticket packages or specific parking in advance. Um, Cause if you can't imagine, you're not gonna come the whole way to where we are at by parking and then drive back to where the parking is at. Um, and I'm not sure if Brett touched on it while I was walking around and everything, but everything is completely digital this year. So to have that parking pass in advance is very important. So literally five minutes before we got in a call with you guys, the parking attendants came, picked up their scanners, uh, picked up their MiFi, Wi-Fi spots, uh, and they'll be do for the rest of the week conducting and scanning ticketing out there of parking. So when you think of selling a ticket, it's not just a ticket as entry or a seat, it's parking sometimes, which is a very, very large revenue generator uh, for a venue or an organization like this. So looking down behind me where I'm at, uh, the buses will come from all those parking lots all across the area around here, some four to five miles away. Um, those buses this year, obviously will be socially distanced and not dropping off with hundreds of people pulling out, rolling out of it like they did to us in the past. Uh, so we'll probably have, you know, 20 to 40 per each bus come out. So they let them off here. They also pick them up here and shuttle them back. As you can see, they already have the queue system set up, much like Disney World already in the park. Uh, for when they do come back to pick people up. Um, as you come in, and one of the biggest things to notice when working an event like this is the sponsorship of it. Every PGA event you notice isn't just this PGA event here, 
with the exception of the masters, um, everyone is sponsored by, or the waste management open, or in this case, the Honda Classic open. So you're greeted by great signage everywhere you go, um, directing you in. So you come off the bus, past the tennis courts that uh, were just getting watered. Uh, and it could be, a, as I showed some of you that were earlier on, to where we're at right there. And difference from this year being is that it says guest services this year. That biggest reason being is that we're not selling tickets on site this year. For anyone coming out, we're not advertising ticket sales because we used to take cash, we used to take credit cards. Um, we're trying to be completely contactless this year. Guest services means that we're here to help and solve your solutions. Do we anticipate people who didn't read their emails? Do we anticipate someone bringing up the wrong ticket? They bought the wrong one? Yes, and that's why we're all here. So looking further at the entry points, as soon as you turn the corner, you're there. And as importantly, you can see, is they're putting up all the signage right now. And safety signage above all, which is, the new norm, all right? And entry points with visible up above. You can see the safety plexiglass they're putting up as well. Um, branded safety plexiglass with the Honda Classic symbol on. At which point then you will go through our security checkpoint. And the magnometer is being set up, security there. Um, if you've been to one of the games at PPG, Paints Arena, you've seen that the technology of magnometers and uh, metal detectors has changed a lot, uh, that they're able almost to thermal scan or search for different stuff that um, sort of like a TSA checkpoint that make entry a little bit more quicker, uh, but they're set up there. And then afterwards, where you saw in the background when I did, is you go through the first activation point. Um, and sponsorship and activation is such a huge thing. Uh, like I mentioned with this tournament, because Honda wants to get the most out of their sponsorship money. So they send you through a tent with a bunch of Honda cars to look at. Uh, sit in, try it. Uh, actually, this year, I'm sorry, you're probably not able to sit in them. Just look at this year. Uh, in the past, you used to be able to sit, sit in them. But Honda wants you to get, you, uh, get your attention with all that. As you would further go past the Honda activation point, in the past, there used to be a series of um, advertising row, almost like a marketing row of local organizations, local golf chapters, vacation sites. They're not there this year. Uh, it's to eliminate touch points. It's to um, eliminate people stopping and gathering. Uh, you just, I didn't do that. So, uh, um, that's what you get for being on an active work site. It's just things dropping every once in a while. Um, but that's not there as well too. So we're not up on the course this week, but we're not able to show you some of that stuff there, but we are showing you the main action of where it goes. And everyone is super pleased with me that I'm bringing in here and showing them all in my wonderful team. Um, what I wanted to do next is introduce you guys to first Cali Lindsberg. Um, if you wanted to come down here at all. Or... Okay. Hey guys. Uh, Callie uh, has been with me for uh, several years. I'm gonna let her introduce herself and also explain what she's done uh, with us and what her role last year was at the Honda Classic. Um, she's a full-time employee with Bomb Advisors. And just to kind of show you some of the staff that we hire, the experience of what people do on site for us. Um, I met Callie five years five ago, years ago um, with Major League Baseball Hall of Fame tour that we were doing. Um, she was tour accountant and yes, manager. tour manager. Tour She's had so many titles, I gotta keep straight and everything. Um, and we have been friends since then, and she's one of the hardest workers I know, willing to jump into any site, uh, willing to jump onto any tour and make the best out of it. So without further ado, we're back in the box office, and here's Callie Linsberg. Hey guys. Um, so yeah, as Jason said, we've known each other about uh, five years. We started out on a baseball hall of fame tour, so I got to know him as being our uh, box office management site. Um, this uh, Recently, me and him have started, and I've kind of become more of the role traveling touring person for uh, any projects that we have that aren't necessarily in the Pittsburgh area. So it's become, um, we'll either do it for touring uh, shows. So we did like with Apollo tour um, out in California. And so doing ticketing operations, front of house management. Um, most of my background, um, I went to the school of the University of South Carolina. Um, I was a sport and entertainment management major. Um, my background has kind of been more in the accounting finance role. Um, and it mostly touring, like I got my start with the circus 
So I started off with Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey, traveling by train, um, worked for Cirque du Soleil, where I was a tour accountant, traveling internationally, settling shows, um, have shifted from there, gone more into some of the music stuff with Live Nation, um, and then now working for Jason, doing more of this box office management. Um, so a little bit about my role this year, it's uh, <laughs> changing compared to last year. Um, last year, I was in more of a finance manager role, which was we had cash handling. Um, so this year, you know, we aren't going to see as much cash. People are purchasing tickets prior. Um, we're also going to have uh, have more so uh, if any, if there is kind of this chance of walk up, maybe we will kind of do a credit card, but there is absolutely no cash for us. So completely eliminated what I was going to do. Um, but that allows me to be more of a roamer. <laughs> Excuse the noise. Um, so whereas Jason's going to be stationed up here at our front of uh, front gates area and kind of can't move as easily, um, a golf course is kind of big. So I'm going to be stationed more towards our clubhouse, um, towards the course where our hospitality venues are. And so that way I can support all of those different locations because pretty much for us with the tickets standing in, um, the biggest issue that we're going to run into is the fact that a ticket up front gets scanned twice by mistake. By the time they get back to those clubhouses, those hospitalities, that's when that ticket can be invalid. So that's kind of where we're looking at most of our problems being. Is there anything else you want me to touch on? Nope. No, that was wonderful. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a fast talker to you guys. As you can see, we're making this presentation as organic as possible. <laughs> and as you can hear, we're in an active construction zone as well, <laughs> too as they are getting ready for everything. So we knew that this wouldn't be without its bugs by agreeing to do this in person, but it makes it very fun and um, very interesting for us to be here. Um, I wanted to bring a few other people in real quick, just to introduce and tell you and so you see what they work for us. Uh, just to say hi, that's our friend Charles right here, who is in charge of scanning. Hey guys. Uh, we just had all our scanners back there. The whole team, he's gonna be in charge of distributing them to the gates where you just saw us at and working with everybody uh, to make sure that people are accurately scanned in. Uh, with a four day tournament, you can anticipate that people are gonna show up with the wrong day. People are gonna show up and not buying the right ones uh, and we're there to deal with all of that. Uh, back here, diligently weighing their time uh, is Andrea Lozano and Reed Weber. Uh, Andrea was a, a gem of a find for us last year, who comes from the festival circuit. Um, they've got experience with, with you guys have done Bonnaroo and what else? Uh, most of the main music festivals that you've done, um, working in all sorts of hospitality, ticketing, and everything like that. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of closer so they can see you guys. So <laughs> we're just going with the flow here, guys. We actually both got married last year from uh, UCF. Good night. Yeah, uh, doing entertainment management. So I was in that spot last year, graduating right as Corona hit, so that was fun. And then I'm new to the team, uh, so this is my first uh, time out here with these guys. Um, so I'm definitely used to like music and entertainment, but uh, sports is something I enjoy, so it's kind of easy to transition into this role as well. And why I wanted to highlight these guys and just point them out as well too is is that Charles comes with tons of experience with the Honda Classic, so we follow his lead a lot um, with different ways of how things have been in the past, and then he's been great in helping us adapt. But these two guys, um, like they said, they haven't worked in sports a lot, but they're transferable skills, and that's one of those important things I try to teach to you guys uh, and everybody in class and on campus is even though they're festival oriented, there's a part of the staff here that they've only ever really done sports. All right, so when someone like them come in like we come in that does touring, like Callie that does touring, um, we're able to kind of provide, you know, IMG, Honda Classic organization, uh, some different insight into, hey, you know what, we did this on a festival. You know what, I see that you're selling this type of package. What if you did it as an RFID? What if you did it with entry? What if you added this to it? Different things that we see um, at the festivals, different stuff. So they're an awesome integral part. Um, I also credit Andrea with encouraging me to learn Spanish in the last year. <laughs> She's one of the most incredible customer service people I've ever seen. And last year, she amazed me by um, extremely very well going bilingual and discussing with the customer uh, situations and issues that they were going. Made the customer feel incredible, uh, welcomed, and comfortable in speaking Spanish with her. I said, that was so cool. I want to learn that. So in the last year, I've been doing Duolingo. Uh, and I came down here and I impressed her with some very amateur elementary <laughs> Spanish today that she told me I was doing a really good job with. Um, so if you can learn another language, uh, it helps out, especially when you're traveling 
to different parts of the country. Um, as well too, as I have had some uh, of my employees learn sign language. You cannot tell how appreciative a customer can be that comes up that has difficulty speaking, conveying the message they want to, and someone come up and be able to, uh, you know, communicate with them through sign language. Um, so I just wanted to put Andrea on the spot as being my motivation uh, to learn Spanish in the last year. So, uh, and finally, out of my team, uh, if you were coming in and going, there, there's Sebastian's over here as well too. Sebastian will have the enviable job of being in charge of what's called the bear trap this weekend. Um, the bear trap is an imagine, imagine Kenny Chesney fans at a golf tournament uh, is the best way to explain it. Um, and Sebastian gets to scan all of them and deal with the rowdiness uh, at the bear trap. So for any of you that have ever watched Happy Gilmore, parts of that are true. Uh, golf isn't all just hold the quiet, stick up and, you know, uh, clap on air. There are places like the bear trap where we uh, very happily, Sebastian has agreed to go and work and we'll deal with the rowdy golf fans, the Happy Gilmores of the crowd. Um, and, and I'll have stories for you guys when I get back from that, I can guarantee. So uh, finally, I want to end up with my crew and just bringing in someone very uh, special to the company, but special uh, on a personal level. Uh, so come on up, Marianne Hansen, formerly Bagnoli of how I've known her. Um, Marianne and I go so far back to my arena days that Marianne was my promoter for Phil. And one of the things that I'm finishing with her, is just one is because she was hiding from me the whole time um, and kept running away every time I came by her with the camera. Uh, but most of all is that um, Marianne went through different struggles as well through this pandemic, uh, as all of us did, not to put that on the spot or anything. Um, but it was our relationship that, you know, and the relationships with people you have in the industry that really helped a lot of us get through this and everything. So when the opportunity came up to be in kind of her neck of the woods, she's three hours away. I said, hey, I would love to work with you. Um, you know, and, and whether there's an opportunity to work with us full time, if not, um, but come in and experience this with us. Luckily, and I'll let her explain it too without taking words out of her mouth. Um, she was able to go back to Felton just the last few weeks. Um, but because of their understanding the importance of maintaining relationships throughout the industry as well, too. Uh, her boss said, you know what, go work that, get experience, make connections in that industry. Maybe there's things that you can learn on a PGA event that you can bring back to Phil that will apply to Disney on Ice. Maybe there's things with the ticketing system we can apply on an individual basis. So without that, I'll let her give you a little history of us. Uh, I'm clearly one of the best buildings she's ever worked with <laughs> when I worked at Console Energy Center and PPG Paints Arena. Um, but Marian Hansen from Phil Entertainment. Hey guys. I mean, I you know, I've known Jason for over 11 years now um, during my time at Feld. And one thing um, that he hit home is it is about relationships. It's industry is very small. Um, and, you know, you never know who you're going to meet down the line and what that could lead to. And, um, you know, we all in the industry took a really hard hit with, with COVID. I unfortunately was on the end of getting furloughed and then laid off and then fortunately getting back on the Feld team as we start to tour some of our events um, around the country uh, slowly, but we're getting there. So there's hope on the way. Um, but I really, it was really important for me um, for the relationship, but also just experience wise in the industry is to come out and see this event, experience something new. I've never worked a, a tournament style event like this. And you just never know what that's going to lead to um, for something, you know, how it could relate back to my Feld um, stuff or in the future or anything like that. So it really is relationships and cultivating them and keeping in touch because um, you never know where it's going to lead, really. Yep. Yeah. And just for what she can take and apply, tipping wise, I mean, when you guys hear Marianne's a promoter, she deals with the marketing side of it, sometimes even the booking of the dates. She'll travel with the tour uh, at the certain spots that she has. So she's mm -hmm. on site there at the venues. Um, obviously, life is going to be a lot different for touring and, 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 and how many people you can have on a tour coming out. Yeah. You know, they're still working it out. But Feld has been one of the things that has, you know, been going through this, whether through Monster Trucks and Disney on Ice. Um, and there are other properties that are going to come back. So mm -hmm. um, it's just good to see her <laughs> down here and to work together. Yeah. So. Awesome. All right, you can go. Hi, no. So, <laughs> so as you can see, we kind of went very organic um, with this presentation and just kind of showed you around the front, um, the front end of the box office and what we're kind of preparing it ready. Um, like you said, you've heard the, the the drills and the things falling and crashing around us. Um, so it is an active work zone. Um, at that time, at this time, guys, uh, 
if you want to open it up, Megan, if there's been any questions, um, if anybody has any stuff for anybody you've heard from, uh, Brett's still here as well too, if you guys have any questions for him. So I, I called him, he thought he could hide from me by turning his camera off too, but um, no, basically I took Bob, when you presented me with this, I said, oh yeah, I'm gonna get everyone to talk. And they're like, what do we have to do? And I'm like, I'm just gonna throw you questions. We're all just gonna join together and everything, so. <laughs> Megan, if you would go ahead and turn the camera on and let us know if there's any questions that came about uh, our chat. If you guys have anything now, uh, we'll open it up to you guys. Okay. Um, yeah. There's only one question. Um, it came from Bob. He asked if ticket packages include concessions and how do you purchase concessions at the event? Brett, I'll defer to you. If you I'm want. sorry. Can, can you repeat that? I there's drilling in the background. I didn't hear it. <laughs> Sorry. It was here. I have to, I have the chat up. It said, do ticket packages include concessions? Uh, and how do you purchase concessions at the event? If so? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So last year, they did have ticket packages that included concessions. Um, they actually included parking as well. They, had, they would have a family four pack that included four grounds tickets uh four hot dogs four sodas this year they did away with that so again they're trying to simplify reduce um the interaction between the fans and the guests and so um those ticket packages at least for 2021 have been eliminated uh they for this year um it's my understanding that and i have not been out on the site yet we just arrived today but it's my understanding that a lot of the food offerings they are, are doing are consolidated like everything else. Um, one, one of the things that uh, Jason alluded to earlier was this, was this bear trap, right? So in the past, it would have a capacity of 5,000 guests and there would be another thousand people waiting outside to try to get in. And this event has evolved over the years that it's not just about golf. Because if, if you're only attracting golf events to a golf tournament, you're limited. But they've, sorry, they, what they've done is they've expanded to make this a entertainment option. And so they, they've attracted more people that may just be a casual golf fan or maybe know nothing about golf in general. And the Bear Trap seems to be that place that a lot of folks have gravitated to over the years. And so just to give you an idea of the capacity reductions that have occurred, as I said, last year or the previous years, it's always been 5,000. This year, it's been reduced to 1,200. And last year, they had one entrance. This year, they have three. So of the 1,200, they've divided the bear trap into three sections. And so each section will have approximately a capacity of 400 each. So within those sections, that gives them the, a better way to manage those capacities. And you know, jobs to try to keep keep folks safe. So long answer to to the question, but hopefully it, it answered it. If not, obviously let me know. I'm I'm also curious about um, how it, it, is there added uh, staffing uh, in case there are attendees that decide to take off their masks or. I'm, I'm sure you have to have one to get in, but you know, is there additional uh, security staffing, for example? I know that's not your job, but is that anticipated for an event like this? Because again, you're you're the first live event that any of us have heard about. So, yeah, yeah. how how will things happen? How how does this work? Sure, sure, sure. So yeah, it, that is that is something that that we will not manage. Obviously, yes, Jason gave you guys the the tour of of the front gate, right? And and the event has done a fantastic job of, of communicating the requirements, the restrictions in advance. I think as Callie noted or Jason may have noted, look, there's no, there's no on-site box office sales this year. Um, so everything needs to be done in advance. But to answer your questions about who is essentially patrolling the grounds for that, um, I do not know for certain how that is being addressed. My, my guess would be that they would have additional staff assigned, additional security on site looking for that, um, you know, asking folks to adhere to the security protocols. 
Um, but they are taking it very seriously because look, they, they don't, they don't want to be this, this is setting the groundwork for not only just golf, but events in general. And so in years past, this tournament would, would have sales occur in, in October. So there was a five month lead up this year. Sales did not occur. They did not go on sale until February 1st. So we were four months late and literally we have a seven week uh, lead up to, to where we, to, to sell tickets. And because of the reduced capacities and because they are really focusing on maximizing opportunities, um, you know, and again, we're operating at approximately 25% of the capacities that we've done in the past, but you know, three out of the four days, potentially all four days will be sold out. Um, and so it's, it's, it's nice to see that, that folks want to experience live entertainment again, um, but the event understands that they have a lot of responsibility with this and they've been working closely with the PGA Tour. That's, that's something great that the tour does is they, they share. So it, it's, a, it's a common practice of, okay, this worked well for us, this didn't maybe if we had an opportunity to change things up, this is what we would have done. And so the tour is evolving week after week to make sure to try to get it right. Yeah, and the jump in, Bob, one thing that we did on our end too is that typically with staffing, we, we in the past have been like, okay, here you are, you're this person, this is the job you're gonna be doing. Um, but one thing me and Brett did this year when looking at where we needed people was, we were a little uncertain as to the flow of things with people are going to have a little bit more extra traffic in certain places. So we have a bunch of people between Cali and, um, you know, and Marianne that you saw and everything that are a little flexible and we've kind of trained in a couple different areas. Um, so at any given time, you know, if Marianne's here at the front gates, you know, and things get backed up at Bear Trap, we can send her to Bear Trap. Um, and we have them trained in multiple different areas. So wearing multiple different hats is one of the biggest things I teach our students as well too, and not saying, oh, I don't know, that's not my job because we're all doing multiple jobs. But in all honesty, one of the things you almost have to prepare for as well too is what if one of our employees gets sick? Uh, and, and that's something that we would have to remove them from and, you know, knock on wood, that hasn't happened. Like I said, um, Doug's the only one that had to go through a COVID test and everything, which was, you know, good. But um, if that happens, you have to almost kind of staff in preparation of having to quarantine someone or lose someone. And, and I haven't had that happen in the last year that we've been doing some smaller things. Um, but you have to consider that as well, too, and, and train your employees to know beyond just what you may bring them in for, too. So. And then further on another line too, Bob, I know that not related to us, but just in some of my calls with box offices across the country, a lot of venues are implementing um, red card, yellow card, or three strikes and you're out protocols. Um, whereas uh, in Dallas and American Airlines Center, my friends there are doing a really well job in communicating how well it's going, but they actually have guest services or usher people that have been trained in, okay, hey, please put your mask back on, how to escalate that process. Um, once is a yellow card warning. Second is you're issued a red card and you're asked out uh, to leave. You know, some are using a three strike and some of the what I've heard from the baseball teams coming back um, to apply to that. And really, you know, people have asked like, how is it so easy to track people? We only got three to 4,000 people sitting in a stands. People can't disappear into the crowd as much as they used to. So security is able to keep an eye on it and be like, hey, section 201, that guy has his mask off for the third time tonight please ask them to leave if you've given them the warning. So it's an escalation process they're doing. Um, and a lot of people are adapting that, it seems like, across sports and entertainment right now um, in an effort just to get people to comply and help us all get back. So cool, Megan, if there, I think I saw some extra questions in there. I'll toss it back over to you. Yeah, we have a few more that came in. So Jessica asked if customers have a pre-screening health questionnaire that they must complete before entering the event. And she said, if so, what does that process look like and how has it impacted the entry times? So I'll take this one, Jason. Um, yes, that, that questionnaire is occurring. Um, and so it's my understanding it's occurring. So as Jason alluded to earlier, the parking lots are miles away from the site. And so before the guests, I guess, uh, get on the, the bus, they will be asked the question. Um, so the guests will be asked the question again when they arrive on site, literally right in front of us, because they will have a lot of folks arrive via Uber. Um, so to make certain that everyone uh, is asked that question, the health screening question that will occur and how it's impacting um, the gate times, there's going to be a delay. 
So in the past, we would have buses, 50 passenger buses drop off right in front of us and there would be you know four or five of them at one time. So you would have waves of 250 people approach. Half of them had tickets, the other half maybe had questions. And so by the time that we finished with that wave, then another wave of 250 people would occur. And so we would have lines, you know, maybe 20 people deep. This year, capacities are reduced, so we're gonna have less people on site, but the entry process will be delayed because of the screening questions. Um, so it is something that they are going to stagger the buses as they arrive. So uh, you're gonna have a bus arrive, they're gonna unload, another bus arrives, they're gonna unload. So it, it will be staggered and it will be uh, scheduled, if you will. Well, I'll, keep, I'll keep going with the questions. Um, so Frankie asked, what are some common tasks that you do as part of the job every time that you work an event? Wow. Um, I, I think a lot of the work for any event, it's, it's the prep. It's, it's the advanced preparation. Um, you know, building the event, because ticketing, ticketing software, you build the event, you price the event, um, it's the graphics, it's the confirmations, it's it's the correspondence with the guests, um, making certain you, you you dot your I's, you cross your T's. So a lot of a lot of the work is done prior to, because this year is, I wouldn't say 100% digital because it never is, but I, I would say it's it's 95% digital. Um, a lot of the a lot of that work that that may have been dedicated to fulfillment um, is not there anymore. Digital ticketing, particularly for golf, they've been slow to embrace. Um, you know, even up to five years ago, all the tickets would be physically mailed. You would have that, that ticket that would go around your belt loop and you would wear it around. It'd be kind of like a souvenir ticket. Um, they've, they've changed now. And so as I said, a lot of tickets, the majority of the tickets are now on, on this guy. And so um, the fans are embracing it. I think they, they understand the need uh, to go digital, especially today. Um, last year, uh, the, it was probably 60% digital, 40% physical tickets. Um, and so it's, it's now 95 to five. So we'll see what next year will bring. Um, 2022, scary that I'm even talking about 2022 when the 2021 year uh, event hasn't even occurred yet. But I, I assume that they're gonna, it's gonna be kind of a hybrid approach. Um, golf is always about family. And so I can see them bringing back a lot of the family four pack packages. You know, the, one of the questions was for to include the, the food and the beverage and, and so forth. I could see them totally bringing those types of packages back, but um, they're also going to learn on, on how they've maximized revenues for this year and probably implement a lot of, of what they've done this year for, for next year as well. And for me personally, it's getting in town in time so that I can go to a Walmart or a giant or a supermarket <laughs> and load up on snacks to bring to the site so we all have enough snacks for the week too. So that's one of my big Pop-Tarts and croutons usually. So <laughs> No, everything Brad said. It definitely during this this new age of everything, Zoom calls and prep definitely held out. Um, I think it was the amount of prep that we did, you know, just with a few extra calls and the, and the communication with people before getting on site here that made today very easy. Um, you know, as compared to last year, we were here from the Saturday beforehand and had four or so days, four to five days extra ahead of time before the first event um and the prep went very well this week i think just you know from experience and and being prepared like we were so zoom calls and and megan i just saw one call one real quick that came by about what we're going to keep from the pandemic if i can just slide into that question real quick and then real quick and i'll let you go back to you but in all honesty there's still going to be a remote aspect to things that people um 
might not all be in the same offices and everything. Um, to prepare for things, Zoom was incredibly useful for us. Uh, we did a lot of training on the ticket system with Brett ahead of time, uh, where he was hosting would share his screen and we walked through the actual purchase process. Um, it made it easy for Doug to go and just jump into his role and start processing tickets without much question. Um, and he was able to do it fairly autonomous where me or Brett would just say at the end of the day, hey, how'd your day go? And he was like, fine, I had no issues, you know? Um, so Zoom definitely, you know, the big blue button like we use, Google Meets, um, it's something to utilize in the future, even if it's just a one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting, I think too, so. But then, Megan, go ahead, I'll let you take If there's any more questions, uh, Bob, and if we're starting to wrap up, you let us know when you need either of us to shut up. So they finally stopped doing construction around here too. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, my, I noticed my dog ran off of his leash, so I just started chasing him. Um, what about the obvious question, right? So, uh, yeah, so I saw Austin's question just pop up about aspects of uh, event planning during the pandemic. So I kind of asked, answer that already. Uh, if you want to hit Olivia's question or even uh, Francesca, it looks like we have some extra too. So. Okay, yeah, Olivia, sorry if you can hear my mom. She's like trying to catch my dog. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have things falling down around us here and, and water sprinklers going off. So it, it, it's just par for the course of how, how just like organic this whole presentation has been. I love it. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Olivia has said, this question comes from the golf fan in me, but have you ever had the opportunity to meet any players while working in the tournament? I, I've worked this event for seven or eight years and um, not formally. Um, you know, they'll, they'll come into the finance office and they'll cash a check for, for petty cash. And so, you know, you may have Rory McIlroy in front of you, but... Anytime you work events, um, I don't care if it's golf, tennis, what have you, you have to separate from being a fan to being, you know, an employee. So sometimes it's hard because you're you're in awe, but um, no, I, it's it's one of those things that we were always taught not to try to be involved, not not to engage. Um, so you know, I don't have any photos with me of me and Tiger, me and Rory and, and my office wall, anything like that. So unfortunately not. That that is the ticketing is is not the uh, the glamorous side of, of the event. Um, you know, for that you would probably want to be involved in accreditations, credentials, um, player support, something along those lines. Ticketing is mostly dedicated to customer service and support. I'm honored enough just to be able to work with Brett Cook every day. Uh, and I hear he plays a really mean game of golden tea. So I will take that uh, for what it's worth. So, um, but in a serious way as well too, sort of like I mentioned as well too, is that there is a, there's a very defined wall even more so now because of health reasons between the athletes, performers, uh, whatnot. I think you'll see this a lot, even when we go back to concerts and everything too, is that for those of you who work in venues or maybe we're runners, that hallway to the stars dressing rooms or backstage as we call it, isn't gonna be open as a throughway anymore. Um, you know, one of the biggest things I remember from working in the arena is just working WWE events and how open the wrestlers were to coming in. They worked out there, you know, while you were setting chairs, they were very open to talking to you. That's gonna be a thing of the past as well too. Um, and it's even more so in sports where, you know, look at everything that's transpired from the bubbles earlier in the year. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier about the tiers, you know, we're in the fan facing tier. We're going to make sure all 20 plus thousand, 10,000, they get in. Um, so that's our priority. And also, too, if we are exposed to something now, considering the virus and everything, to pass that on to a player, to pass that on to something, that's why we are so strictly, even more so prohibited now from them, because um, we could cost. Uh, a small mishap like that um, of just crossing paths in the in the same hallway um, could lead to millions of dollars of, of you know anyone seen you know just golfers dropping out players having to be quarantined um, and different stuff so um, yeah it takes on a whole different meaning now of just interacting sometimes but cool and Megan maybe do we have time for one more and then we'll yeah we can do one more Jordan asked what's the most hectic period when you're planning these events is it the day of or a couple months before or the very beginning. Um, for my side, it's, it's day of tomorrow is, is going to be stressful. 
um, you know, as Jason said, we, we've done a lot of advanced planning, right? We, we've, we've had the Zoom meetings. I think we're, we're more prepared for this year than any other event, any other tournament we've worked. Um, but that being said, until you have a staff, until you have a volunteer that's actually performing their duty in person, um, you know, working that scanner, understanding you know, what ticketing is all about. So the first two hours tomorrow are going to be stressful. Um, but after that, it, it should be smooth sailing. And the, the thing about preparing, it's a matter of how much time do you have? And, and so there, there, are, there are events that require a 24 hour turnaround, right? There are other events that may give you a month. Um, you know, this event, literally we knew that they were going to have tickets go on sale prior to the new year, but we didn't know how many and we didn't know when, um, but they gave us that baseline. So we had for the most part, everything built by, by the end of the new year. And then it was just a matter of pulling the trigger and say, okay, hey, we're ready to launch February 1st, here we go. And the expectations, we had no idea what to expect uh, because it literally, it, it's, it had been an entire year since the event took place. And just the demand for tickets for, for the first week, 10 days was, was off the charts. It was, it was amazing to see um, just, just how many folks wanted to, I think we're all you know tired of being cooped up, right? So they were very excited. They embraced the opportunity to, to be outside an open air event um, literally for the first time. And so it's, it's going to be exciting to see tomorrow, everyone arriving. I would say the smiles on their faces, but I'm not going to see their, their smile because hopefully everyone's wearing a mask, right? Um, but uh, it's, it's good to be back. And the follow on his sentiment, that's exactly it. There, there's always a certain nervousness when going into, you covered your bases with everything that you, um, I know back in my days in the arena, when I'd have a major on sale going on the next day, I, I worried, did I build the right ticket type? Did I hold the right seats? If you're not nervous a little bit about the job, then you're not passionate about it. That means that you have your something invested in it. Um, but to me, most of all, like Brett said, I'm looking forward to when the gates get in. The first people that come in, in real and all honesty, that first scanner that goes off for the ticket that works, you know, you hear that, beep, beep, you know, instead of the red X, uh, you hear the green check mark beep um, and things are going and I'll have a giddiness to me. That'll probably annoy Brett and everybody else as we're bouncing around here. Cause I already talk enough as it is, uh, as you can see, uh, but that's excitement of just being back at the game and, and, and getting that first one done and knowing that, you know, the things you work for and prepped uh, came out and worked out good. So. Well, we, we want to thank you guys very much. I mean, you know, one of the things that you've done, Brett and Jason, so well is you've given us hope. Um, you, you know, we can see that it's almost showtime. And for all of us, that's, that's what we live for. And um, it's just so great to see, actually see it happen. You know, we, we just, we've been talking for so long in class about, you know, when and if and, and all the things that go along with that. But we're looking at both of you and, and you can almost feel the energy that both of you have about let's get this going. And, um, you know, we, we can feel that. So I, I know this is a busy day for you. This is probably the last thing you wanted to do on a day before you open, but it gives us a lot of hope and we really appreciate you sharing your time with us. Very welcome. Thank you. Okay, yeah, guys. Bob. Hey, everybody on here, Ed. Thank you so much. Have a great event. Thanks so much, Thank Jason. You. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I'm going to now very symbolically just drive away in my golf cart. <laughs> <laughs>